Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench is the Pseudo TDA 2030A board. Why do I call it Pseudo? Because these are fake chips. And I won't go through it all here, but I can tell by the design of this chip, the way it looks, it's not authentic. It's counterfeit. So it's a Pseudo TDA 2030A board. And when I crack the die open, or the package open, and look at the die, these really small die in these things, they can't really handle the normal current that you would have with 4 ohms. So uh, I would stick with 8 ohms with this. It did provide a decent sized heat sink, though with uh, uh, 2.1 here, left and right, and a subwoofer channel. Um... It's still not big enough. It's fine with 8 ohm loads, though, I would think. Okay, so what do we have here? We have AC input, requires a center tap transformer, 24 volts with a center tap, which is what I would recommend. Left and right output, then the subwoofer output. Uh, let's see what else here. We have these filter caps. Yeah, they're kind of small. You know, you got three channels here. I'd like to see up around, upwards around 10,000 microfarads. But these will have to do. We have a uh, input jack, input connector, and this is a connector for the volume and tone board. Remote wired type connector, wired remote. Uh, there's a any 5532. I believe that is a filter, active filter for the subwoofer channel. We'll take a look at that, see if it's actually filtered or not. Now, you can find these boards on eBay and such pretty easily, but not the exact same one. This one has a 9 volt connector here, it has a 9 volt regulator, 7809. In a connector. I don't know what that's for. I would think that if it was for Bluetooth or uh, digital type stuff, it would be a 5 volt, but this is 9 volt. Oh, the cat is. Well, the cat's doing his howling again. <laughs> I don't feel like re recording. Uh, it's pretty decent layout. It has the ceramic caps, rail caps here, bypass for the uh, chips, close to the chips. It has uh, star ground. You can see right here the grounds star right at this point, and they each one runs off to the different part of the circuit. So uh, just giving a quick glance, it looks to be okay. What I think I'll try is to solder in an LM1875 after I test this to see if it's any better. It should be pretty much plug and play. And uh, so I can use my power supply. I'll solder some wires on here to the rails so I can inject the DC directly instead of using a transformer. What are we howling about? Meow. Uh, I think we're getting hungry. Meow. Yeah, that's what it is. Meow. Okay, the cat's fed. Power supply's hooked up, plus minus 12 volts. Let's rock. Oops, uh, can't play that. <laughs> Okay, so we have volume here. This is really kind of just a tone control. 
for the left and right channels and what they're calling base is actually the subwoofer level control so it kind of does work like a bass and treble but with the uh, subwoofer channel there okay I got the 8 ohm loads to the right and left channel these two 4 ohms in series for 8 ohms on the subwoofer channel do all channels driven test now it seems to be limiting the bass to the right and left channels and sending it out to the subwoofer channel so it's not really going to be all channels driven at the same time because of the way it limits the signal so yeah, it'll be interesting to see the frequency response of this thing how they're doing it but anyhow we'll go ahead and get a output measurement here both channels driven okay let's crank this guy up uh oh it's oscillating so I wonder if it's an attribute of those counterfeit chips or a board layout issue so it'll make it kinda hard to get a measurement I'll just tune out the uh, clipping on the top so we're getting 6.67 volts so 6.67 volts squared divided by 8 is 5.56 watts and that seems to be a little lower than I would expect okay this is the subwoofer channel here no oscillations about 6.9 pretty close yeah 5.95 so a little bit more okay this is the frequency response of the base channel or the subwoofer channel we're at 50 Hertz right here okay, this is 10 Hertz this is 20 that's a little bit off so it it's about a little more than 3 dB down at 10 Hertz so yeah that's all right there I set it to be at zero at these upper and lower graticules as you're seeing right now so let me increase the frequency until it starts to roll off okay we're starting to see some roll off here we're at 100 Hertz Okay, right around here is 3 dB down at 160 Hertz. So that's the frequency characteristic of the subwoofer channel. So let's see what the main channels are like. Okay, I set my 0 dB point here. We're at, now we're at 3000 kilohertz. I'll just rack this thing out to 20 kilohertz actually went up slightly and we're 20 kilohertz 24 let's go back the other way now see what happens to our frequency response okay, we're at 1 kilohertz it's starting to roll off a little bit Right about here is, let's say that's around 71% or 3 dB down. And that is around 280 Hertz. I guess you could say 300 if you want. And it continues. And it's kind of flattening out there, isn't it? So it's kind of a shelf. What's going on here? Whoops. Went down to see what they're doing they're uh, they're not rolling it all the way off they're just it's kinda like a shelf yeah it comes down it rolls off to a certain level and stays there it stays at 3 dB down see as I crank it up it's not changing 
until I hit around 300 hertz and then it starts going up so they are letting some bass into the main channels just at 3 dB down here's a distortion at 1 kilohertz this is a 1 kilohertz fundamental and that's the pilot signal and nothing really maybe tiny blips at 5 and it could be noise if it changes too much but yeah it might be a little blip there nothing really to worry about distortion at 10 kilohertz I don't have a pilot signal in this test signal so it, you're just looking at any distortion nodes I don't really see anything to be concerned with okay we're at 20 Hertz I had to hit the stop on the scope because it the signal resets periodically and sometimes it screws up my readout here but that's the 20 Hertz fundamental and we get little bitty nodes here still I don't think it's anything to be concerned with okay so I substituted an LM1875 for the counterfeit TDA 2030A and uh, take some measurements again here and see how it performs okay let's see what happens here crank it up there's clipping and what don't you see? It's not oscillating, is it? Much better. So those chips are junk. They oscillate. Counterfeit junk. I remeasured the output power. I forgot before I had to get more waveforms on the screen. So that first measurement was a little bit high. So the counterfeit chip puts out 5.4 watts. And this one puts out 5.9, practically 6. So it just shows you that the authentic chip can do a little better in the output power. When I compared these chips a while ago, there was quite a bit of difference at 4 ohm loads. I don't remember the exact number. It was like 3 watts or so. so there's a considerable difference. The big thing is, though, the oscillation. It's just a complete fail if the thing's going to oscillate. You know, something's wrong. But, yeah, when I put in the 1875, it's stable. No problems. Well, there you have it. The pseudo TDA-2030A board. Because of the counterfeit chips that oscillate. You know, I can't give this thing a passing grade if it's going to oscillate. You know, they're going to put those lousy counterfeit parts in that are not stable. It's just not good. So, yeah, I mean, the these ceramic bypass caps, you know, they're pretty close to the chip pins. They should be doing the job, which they are, because, you know, I put in the LM1875 and no oscillation there. I'm only driving resistive loads. I mean, of course, there's always a little bit of inductance and capacitance in the, the wires and such, but, you know, not something that should make an amplifier oscillate. Yep, just junk. Don't recommend this. I guess I'll wrap it up here. Thanks for watching.